Good morning. This is Pastor Mike coming to you from Highburger United Methodist Church in Perry County, Alabama. Uh, just so you'll know, this is being filmed on Saturday, March the 28th, 2020, just to get it ready for publication tomorrow. Um, I want to thank you all, first of all, for staying at home and for practicing physical distancing, washing your hands, disinfecting, doing all the things that we should do, that you all know to do by now to slow the progression of this uh, virus and to save lives. I also want to thank you for staying in touch with one another through phone calls and social media and emails and texts and helping especially our widows and people living alone, people that are handicapped, and being mindful of them. Uh, this morning, I also want to thank uh, Jay and Kayla Cochran for uh, being our videographer, sound technician, producer, director, <laughs> for bringing this, uh, making this possible today. And uh, uh, Kayla also takes care of our church building and cleans up all the dead uh, ladybugs every year. But thank you. She teaches Sunday school as well, but thank you both for being here. And I'll be preaching to you too as if you're the entire congregation <laughs> this morning. And by the way, thanks to Tim Cook for the iPhone. That's how we're making this possible. Tim is uh, also a graduate of Auburn, War Eagle. Stay well. But uh, welcome everybody. And uh, special hello to those watching from across Alabama and Indiana. Massachusetts and uh, places all over. Uh, we're glad you're here. For our call to worship this morning, I just wanted to read a few words from this hymn that uh, means a lot to me, especially at times like this. O oh soul, are you weary and troubled? No light in the darkness you see. There's light for a look at the Savior and life more abundant and free. His word shall not fail you, he promised. Believe him and all will be well. Then go to a world that is dying, his perfect salvation to tell. Turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Would you all join with me in uh, unison to say our affirmation of faith? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for hearing our prayers. Thank you for drawing close to us during these dark days. Great is your faithfulness. Help us to turn our eyes to you for comfort and strength. We pray for the coronavirus to be stopped, both here and around the world. We pray for those already infected and for their loved ones. Thank you for the doctors, nurses, medical researchers, medical personnel who are fighting on the front lines for their self-sacrificing, unselfish service. Bless them and give them health and strength. May this worldwide trial bring people together, Lord, helping us to draw close to one another as we are reminded of our common frailty and interdependence. Bless our churches and congregations that we can be characterized by love and hope and service and that we may represent Christ well to our neighbors and to all those in need. 
Watch over us, we pray, in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 27, verses 45 and 46. From the sixth hour until the ninth hour, darkness came over all the land. About the ninth hour, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? This is the word of the Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Amen. Every Sunday we take up an offering in our church, and I wanted to read 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 7 and 8. Every man according as he purposeth in his heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loveth a cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you, that ye, always having all sufficiency in everything, may abound to every good work. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. This Sunday we continue our series. We've been uh, looking at the seven last words of Christ that he spoke while hanging on the cross. We are in the season of Lent, and so this is a time of reflection and self-evaluation, and we will always remember Lent 2020 as a particular time of, of drawing near to Christ during the Lenten season. But I just wanted to share with you uh, my thoughts on this fourth word of Christ on the cross, where he cried with a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Somebody said that perhaps these are the most human words of that crucifixion day. I know there's a lot of you that uh, can identify with Christ when he said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because I know you've probably felt that way at times. I know I have. And perhaps some of you are feeling that way right now in the midst of this pandemic. Maybe you're feeling that, uh, my God, why have you forsaken me? Um, we, we're familiar with the term God forsaken. <laughs> you know, why am I in this God forsaken place or in this God forsaken situation? And so we all go through times in our lives and, and places where we wonder if God has forgotten us, if God has turned his face from us. Jesus felt that way while he was dying on the cross. And certainly we can understand that in his torture and his pain, um, his suffering on the cross. Jesus cried out, the Bible says, with a loud voice. In the Bible, 
Every time you see where Jesus cries out with a loud voice, it's a great call to action. When Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, the Bible says he cried out with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. And in 1 Thessalonians, it says the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel. So Jesus shouting, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me, shows that something important is happening here, not only for Jesus, but for us as well. I think this shows us how to face with faith even the worst trials of our lives. Jesus did cry out in pain and anguish. That reveals his humanity. You know, it is okay to cry. I imagine all of us have shed a tear in the last couple of weeks as we consider this virus and what it's doing to our world, our, our families, our health, our economy. It's even okay to doubt, to ask questions. You know, all that is a part of genuine faith, isn't it? That's what faith is. We know that faith is the evidence of things not seen, the substance of things hoped for. But we are human and we do grapple with our faith at times. That's all a part of genuine faith. A couple of days ago on the Today Show, Hoda Kotb cried on air. She just burst into tears. And when she did, I identified with her. I think we all identified at that moment because we, we know how she's feeling. We're feeling the same way. So we identify with Jesus when he cried out on the cross and Jesus identifies with us. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 says, We do not have a high priest who is unable to empathize with us in our weakness, but we have one who has been tempted in every way, just as we are, yet he did not sin. John Meacham, who wrote a book about the seven last words of Christ called The Hope of Glory, said, as a people whose lives are frequently defined by feelings of alienation from one another and from the Creator, we recognize in Jesus what we ourselves suffer, thus drawing closer to the truth of the cross. Jesus really did suffer on the cross. He really did die on the cross. And that, along with the reality of the empty tomb, and the resurrection is the primary teaching of the New Testament and it forms the foundation of our Christian faith. Jesus wasn't play acting when he died on the cross. He didn't pretend to suffer and die. He was the Word made flesh, full of grace and truth. So he really did suffer. He really did die. Now, I want you to realize something about this. It's important for us to remember that when Jesus said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He was actually quoting from Psalm 22. Psalm 22 is a Psalm that Jesus was very well acquainted. Uh, he probably knew it by heart. They memorized scriptures as you know, quite a bit in those days. And I just want to read a portion of Psalm 22 to you this morning. It starts out in verse 1. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And then if you go down to verse 20, I want to read a little bit more. He says, Deliver my life from the sword, my precious life from the power of the dogs. 
Rescue me from the mouth of the lions. Save me from the horns of the wild oxen. I will declare your name to my brothers. In the congregation, I will praise you. You who fear the Lord, praise him. All you descendants of Jacob, honor him. Revere him, all you descendants of Israel. For he has not despised or disdained the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him, but has listened to his cry for help. From you comes the theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you will I fulfill my vows. So Jesus knew Psalm 22, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But he also knew the rest of the psalm. He knew that in the rest of Psalm 22, there was light in the darkness. There was life from death. There was rescue from tribulation. That these are the promises of God. The cross, as we all know, was a place of violence and suffering and death. But we all also know that God transformed the cross into an occasion of indescribable love and of salvation for all humankind. So Jesus endured indescribable suffering and death on the cross. He endured its pain. He endured its darkness and loneliness, relying on Scripture and the truth that God gives hope to the fearful and salvation to the fallen and order to chaos. This world can be a tragic place. Jesus has experienced the pain of his people. Jesus has wondered why. Then his father's will was done and for Christ, Darkness became light, death was conquered, and this is our story, this is our faith, this is our consolation. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you that we have a high priest, Jesus Christ, who can empathize with us in times of darkness, and isolation and loneliness and worry and fear. We know that Christ not only is with us, but Christ understands because he's been there. He does empathize with us in our weakness. So we're not alone. Thank you, Lord. And God, as we continue through these times of testing, these difficult days, we pray that you would give us daily your grace and your mercy to help us in our time of need. Help us not only to focus on ourselves, but to look out and see those around us that we can encourage with a word that we can pray for, strengthen and help. So Lord, thank you. We do pray especially for those who are alone in their isolation, who are weak, who are ill. And God, be mindful of them and help us as well. But thank you for reminding us on this Lord's Day that even while we're apart and we long to be back together in church, we look to you and we have faith, even though, though at times it may falter. You understand, and you love us, and you care for us. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. We pray all these things in the name of Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. And I want to just say a quick word before we close. Uh, I know that one of our members, Brooks Moore, is uh, suffering from some ailments unrelated to the virus uh, up in Huntsville. And Brooks, we are praying for you and hope that you get better soon. Brooks said that he uh, is living in Huntsville, but his heart is in Highbury. And Brooks, our, our hearts are with you. And also, we know that Patsy's brother is uh, transitioning. He's in uh, hospice. And uh, 
us and we pray for Patsy and her family as well and for all the others that are a part of our congregation we keep them in mind this morning may the Lord the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing so that by the power of the Holy Spirit you may abound in hope amen and go in peace <laughs>